This video is going to be on mitering borders. Quilters find that somewhat intimidating, some do. So hopefully this video will help clarify that up. We're going to pretend that this is my quilt top. It is square, most quilt tops are not square, but that's all right. We're gonna consider this the length, and this is going to be the width. So before you start doing anything, Mark the four corners of the quilt a quarter of an inch away from the edge. That is very important because you are not going to go beyond that. You're going to stop at that quarter inch and lock your stitches in. So this will be the length. How do I know how long to make my border? Well, you have the length, and this is 10 inches, and I need to add the border width, which is two and a half, twice and then an extra six inches that's very generous but i'd rather have too much flopping on the sides than not enough so this piece of fabric the yellow border is 19 inches long so now let's go and put the second border on i'm going to turn this around and again i have my 19 inch i'm going to turn this to the right side I already have the center point marked and I have the center point marked on here and I'm simply going to lay that down and I'm going to pin it and go to my machine and remember you'll know where to start and stop start right at that quarter inch marking back stitch and go all the way down and stop at the quarter inch right here just like I did on this one. And this is what it's going to look like when you have all the four border four corners on. It's very floppy. It makes this is where quilters don't know what to do. This is a mess. It looks like a mess. So I've already got one done, but I'm not going to let you see that yet. How do we get this these floppy things to be mitered in a quilt just like here? You're going to take your two border strips right side to right side and make sure that they match. You don't want them cattywampy. This is where people go crazy. If you do something like that, it's all, it has to lay flat one against the other straight. And there we are. Now, this has formed an automatic 45 degree angle. Some uh, quilters will just take their ruler and just mark it. I prefer to use my 45 degree angle line. I will place that at the bottom of my border and I will slide my ruler and just push those little, that fabric back line it up. So now I have a 45 degree angle right here and my 45 here and I am get to go to mark. And I take a Frixon pin and I'm going to mark that. Remove the ruler and now I can pin and you can see this is where I stopped with the last stitch. And so I'll just pin this. Just I just use a couple pins. And then I'll go to my sewing machine. I will start stitching at this point here, not go beyond it, right here. Back stitch and come down and stitch all the way. Once that's done, then I can trim to within a quarter of an inch like I did here, but before you trim, make sure there are no puckers here. And this is very flat because I did not go beyond that quarter of an inch. And there lies some of the problems. If you do and you got distracted, then just take your seam ripper and pull out maybe one or two of your stitches. And this should lie very flat. I do have the seams pressed open. If you want, you can press the seams to one side. 
I prefer this because it lays much, much flatter. So after I've done all the four corners, you have a nice mitered border. What about borders that you pieced? For example, just to show you, this is a pieced mitered border. I have one, two, three, four strips of fabric that I cut. If you're going to miter border fabrics that you like and you want to have a, a number of them like this, what you do, don't forget, you measure the length of your quilt and the width. And then if you decide this is four inches wide, then you have the length of your fabric plus the width of the border twice and then an extra fabric which I said I like six inches. So how do you do something like that? How does it work when you've got it on the four corners? Well, here's a pretend quilt. And I've stitched the borders on. I, when I stitched them by machine, um, I did so and then I pressed the borders coming out away from the quilt top. So you're going to take these two pieces of fabric, just like I did with the yellow. You're going to form that 45 degree angle line right here, making sure that the two border fabrics are flat against one another, no puckers. And then again, you're going to take your 45 degree angle ruler, place it up there. See what I mean when I talked about it can be a mess? But just be patient with yourself. Here's my 45 degree angle. I'm going to slide that up and make it even. Now, I'm going to mark it. But before I mark it, let's do something. I'm going to take the upper fabric, pull it aside, and I'm going to have a nice 45 degree line. If this was cattywampy, like let's say you just, I didn't really put it together properly, and I just was, let's see what's going to happen. Well, I'm exaggerating, but you'll get the point. See, there's the point down here and the point here, so that's a disaster. Don't forget, the two border strips, side by each, nice and flat, 45 degree angle, ruler, 45 degree angle at the bottom here and on the here. And you can see that it just makes for a much more accurate piece. And then again, mark it. And then go to the sewing machine. Again, back stitch. Don't go back where you were before and there and then just trim and you'll be fine. What about a border that you have beautiful fabric and oh you'd love to use it for a border. This is what's left over from a project that I worked on which I'll show you. But these, this was a whole uh, like seven or eight of these rows and I thought this is too beautiful to not use. No piecing necessary with a border like this. So how did it turn out? Again, the same method. You have your length, which this is quite a length, and then your width. So again, the same rule applies. You'll note that the formula is, is on your screen, and the formula is L for length, W for width, BW for border width, and plus EX, meaning the extra fabric. So I measured my panel, and then I added on, this is a four inch border. I added that to the dimensions twice, one for each side, and then extra six inches. And I stitched it, I cut the fabric out, so when I, this is a, this is a quarter inch right here. 
And so when I cut my fabric out, I did cut it right along this line. And that was my sewing line, my stitching line. So again, the same rule applies as if you had a pieced border. You're going to take two of the sides and you're going to match them up, make sure they're flat, Again, make sure that you have your 45 degree angle line. And this, and you have to be patient with yourself. Don't give up. And you can see, this is gonna be just fine. Again, the ruler with the marking of the 45, and here's my 45. Don't worry about the rest of the quilt. Just let that crumple wherever it is. And if I will slide my ruler, so I have my 45 down here, and I have my 45 here. And uh, let me open this up and let's hope that these match. Yep, they do match. So you know that when you stitch on that line and you open up your fabrics, it's going to be just perfect. So again, mark it from where you stopped stitching that quarter inch up there on the quilt top. And again, you're going to go to the sewing machine, backstitch, come all the way down. You don't need to backstitch here because your binding will catch that seam. And then when you open that up, you will get a nice mitered border with the fabric print. And don't forget, do not trim until you have this open and it lies flat, because you might just by mistake put a little extra stitch in there and it will pucker. And this is where some quilters get very frustrated. I think it's because that quarter inch hasn't been marked properly. So, I wish you good luck, and hopefully you will have fun mitering a border. It's easy. Thank you.